It's uh, section 3.7 and 3.8 combined, which is applications of derivatives as rates of change in different sciences. Well, uh, so again, so let's go back to the very, very initial definition of the derivative. Ultimately, ultimately, a derivative is a slope. Well, I mean, symbolically, numerically, that's what uh, what the derivative means. It, that's what it computes. It's the slope of the of the equation of the tangent line at a given point on a function f of x. And it's pretty interesting how that value of the slope, you know, uh, in general, this slope. F prime, which is M, the slope, which is some change in the X direction and a change in the Y direction. So that's a rate of change between the Y variable and the X variable in general. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, if you will. However, this can be applied to pretty much every single situation that you can model, you know, like finding if we relate this, if we change some symbols, uh, delta S over delta T, where S represents the position of a particle over time, so that's pretty much the velocity of the particle at a given path modeled by a function. We can furthermore use this notation for uh, chemical reactions, for example. Uh, you know, a chemical reaction that looks like, oh, let me just do a, a very simple, a very simple chemical reaction, A goes to B. You know, where A is the reactant and B is the, is the product. So, if we look at the profile of the chemical reaction, uh, let me do... What happens with with the, with, the, with the reactant anyway. So, at the beginning of the chemical reactions, you have the maximum amount of reactant. In this case, well, typically we express this, uh, this concentration in molar, that is moles per liter, you know? So initially, this is what happens, and then, well, as the chemical reaction progresses, well, the reactants start to disappear and the product which is nothing at the beginning that start, starts that starts to to show right so we get more product but we lose we lose reactant and again we can use these derivatives to actually find how much of the reactants am i having after three seconds after five seconds or how many uh, moles for example how, how much of a product am i getting at different values of time and in this case what well, we can express this as a as a rate of change delta the concentration of a with respect respect this so we're looking at the change in the concentration of the reactant with respect to time again that's just a rate, a rate of change, a rate of reaction. So, and there's many, many situations that you can model using rates of change, using derivatives. And that derivative is going to be, in this case, the rate of the reaction, for example. All right, let's look at some basic case in physics. And again, let's recall our definition, what a delta x is and what a delta y is. Delta means increment or difference, so whenever we see this symbol delta x, that means x2 minus x1, some final minus some initial. And same for the delta y, but in this case, we have that in terms of f. However, this is the same as saying y2 minus y1, alright? And then if we find the ratio, the rate of change between those two quantities, well, that's simply delta y over delta x, which again takes us back to, to the slope. But of course, 
uh, when we found the slope between two points, that gave us a slope of the secant line. But again, we use calculus to find the, the slope of the tangent line. So in this case, that happens when that difference or the distance between those two points is practically, well, it's actually zero. That's going to give us the actual slope at the given point, all right? So, well, in this case, um, let's look at, at one example. So, number one, actually, to describe the physics of, uh, so this is position function. The position function, which is S of T. So, that S denotes the position and T denotes the, the time, so the position at different times. When we find the derivative as prime of t, that's the velocity function. And if we find the second derivative, s double prime, that's the acceleration function. So that's v of t again as well, and that's a of t to denote acceler acceleration and velocity respect. All right, so let's have a look at one example here. So we're going to do a bunch of things for this exercise. So we are given a function that describes the position of a particle where t is, if, is measured in second and s is measured in meters all right well so they're asking us to find the velocity at time t that is just the velocity function number one one thing i would like to do is i would like to graph the function so just so we can see how it looks like And this is going to give us uh, a better idea of the behavior of the function so so we can so this makes sense about all the calculations that we are about to do for for this one so that's x cubed well even though it's a it's a t well the calculator will take it as a as an x anyway it's going to graph the same thing and plus 36 t and then minus 20. Alright, so let's look at the graph. Well, it's going to look, okay, let me zoom uh, feet, I believe it's zero. No, that's not. Zoom. Uh, what's that? Mm, okay, let me just do zoom standard for now. Alright, we will deal with this later. Alright. So letter A, find the velocity at time t. That is, find the velocity function. In other words, they're asking us to find v of t. And v of t is actually the first derivative of this polynomial, that is s prime. And well, the derivative of t cubed, that's 3t squared, minus 2 times 12, that's 24t, and plus the derivative of 36t, which is plus 36 All right so that's the velocity function and that's part a part b they're asking us to find the velocity of the particle after two seconds and after four seconds so again uh thinking back of thinking of what we did back at the beginning of the semester when we were finding not the instantaneous velocity, we were finding average velocities. We were finding our f of b minus f of a over b minus a to find the average velocity. We were not going to find average velocity this time. We we're looking for instantaneous velocities, that is, exactly after two seconds. So all we have to do in this case, well, for letter b, that is v or s prime evaluated number one at two. And 
and just plug into whatever you see the letter T. So that's 3 times 2 squared minus 24 times 2 plus 36. And let's simplify this. All right. So that's a 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 3 is 12 minus 48 plus 36. 12 plus 36 is 48, and then minus 48, that's zero. That means, what does that mean in this case? If, S of, if the velocity is zero and after two seconds. So what's, what, what's going on with the particle after two seconds? It's not a maximum, well, it could be a maximum or a minimum, depending on. Hmm? It's stationary, right? It's at rest, so it's not moving at all. That's another way to say this. Okay, so they're also asking us to find the velocity after four seconds. All we do is plug in the number four, whatever we see the letter T in our first derivative, that is. Three times four squared minus 24 times four plus 36 Okay, so 4 squared, which is 16, 16 times 3, is it not a 48? And 24 times 4, that's 48, time, uh, plus times 2, that's a 96, minus 96, actually, plus 36. Well, 48 minus 96 plus 36, combining these numbers together, that's going to give us um, negative, negative 12, meters per second. All right, now we need, it is, yeah, meters per second. I also forgot the units here, so that's zero meters per second. All right, so we need to, to put the context into the results, but most importantly, the sign. So what do we mean by having a negative velocity? Well, because this, this, um, these particles move in the x direction. The particle can move in the positive x direction or in the negative x direction. So whenever we have a negative velocity here, so number one, in this case, again, this is at rest. It's neither going to the right nor going to the left. But the fact that we have a negative velocity here makes that means that the particle is moving it's uh it's moving in well to the left All right it's moving to the left what else are they asking us okay let's have a look at letter c so the question is when is the particle at rest all right so, at rest means that the velocity is zero. In other words, well, that's the idea from the physics, that's the context from the physics, but the algebraic context in this case will be translated into the following. So, this means when velocity is Zero, zero velocity, zero motion, the particle is at rest, but algebraically is when, when V of T equals to zero. So we need to solve this equation. Solve for T. In other words, so given this trajectory by this cubic polynomial, so that means that the, pole, the, the, the particle is going to go, well, I mean, up and down in accordance with the function, but that means going to the right, then to the left, and then going to the right again. So, it, but in this case, at some points, this particle will be at rest a, a few times. Well, let's find out how many times. So for letter C, for letter C, um, we need to set the derivative v of t equals to zero to find out those values of t for which the particle is at rest during, during the motion along this path. 
All right, so we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 equals to zero. So, well, we, we will have to solve that quadratic equation. And of course, there's a bunch of methods to solve quadratic equations. Uh, using the quadratic formula is one, uh, but I don't think you want to use a quadratic formula with these big numbers, right? That's gonna take forever, possibly the entire lecture, maybe not that long. Uh, but the first thing we try every time we have a polynomial, especially when the leading coefficient is different than one, hopefully we can turn this uh, polynomial whose leading coefficient is one by dividing all terms by the leading coefficient. And in this case, uh, we happen to have all numbers divisible by three. So I'm gonna divide both sides by three. The right hand side, well, zero over three, that's just still a zero. T squared, um, negative 24 over three, that's a negative eight. T and 36 over three, is that a 12? And I think this is a polynomial easy, a polynomial equation easier to solve than the first one. So, again, we have the quadratic formula, we have completing the square, we have a bunch of methods, but the one I would like to go, which is usually the quickest method, is by factoring. Um, hopefully we can factor this polynomial by the double bubble method. So, in other words, we will find factors of 12 that add up to negative eight. So what's that, uh, what are those factors? Anyone? Um, negative six and negative two. Negative six and negative two, so negative six, negative two. So we got the, uh, the polynomial factors, so we're gonna use the zero product property to find those values of t. t minus six equals to zero, and t minus two equals to zero. That means t equals to six and t equals to two. So those are the two values of t for which the, the particle is at rest. That is, the velo the, its velocity is equal to zero. Well, actually this verifies part b, right? When we got uh, b up to equals to zero. So that connects the two parts here. All right, so. So how about we write down, we write that down as a conclusion. The particle is at rest after two seconds and six seconds. All right, so that's what we're obtaining here. The next part, let's have a look at what's letter D about. All right, so letter D, when is a particle moving forward? That is in the positive direction. Well, so when it is moving forward, so the particle is moving forward when the velocity, yes. Would it be after two seconds or after two seconds? Uh, yes, actually at, yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah, at two seconds and at six seconds. Yeah. So, what is the particle moving forward? Again, put in the context of the results with the corresponding signs, a particle is moving forward when the velocity is positive and it's moving backwards when the velocity is negative. So what do we have to do in this case? <coughs> uh, well, so for letter, letter D, uh, the particle is moving forward when its velocity is positive. Right, when it's velocity, it's positive. That means when V of T, it's a quantity greater than zero, all right? What will we have to do in this case? So we will use that velocity function that we got from before. In fact, I'm just gonna use the simplified version of it. And, well, let me do 3T squared. Again, let me do the, the whole thing. 3T squared minus 24 t plus 36 
greater than zero. So in this case, we will have to solve this quadratic inequality. Well, we already have uh, a good portion of the problem, which is the critical numbers, basically. So let me divide by three on both sides. That's t squared minus eight t plus 12 greater than zero. And factoring this polynomial, that was t minus six and t minus two greater than zero, which means t equals to six and t equals to two. So we need to solve the inequality, not the equation. The equation we already solved it in the previous step, in the previous part. To solve an inequality, so that's gonna take us back to precalculus and or intermediate algebra to um, so what we need to do is plot these numbers, what we usually call the critical numbers of the inequality. And that's going to be 2 and that's going to be 6. And what we usually do is write down all the factors t minus 6 and t minus 2. And we are going to come up with different test values to test the signs of the inequality at different regions, in fact. When we chop the number, the real number line here into two values, that gives rise to one, two, and three intervals to test. So each in, for each interval, we will choose our favorite number. Okay, think of any number between negative infinity and two, the easiest number. Zero. zero. All right, I like zero. That's better. All right, between two and six. Four. Four. What about greater than six? Okay, I would like 10, I'll do 10. So what are we going to do in this case? We're going to plug in these values 0, 4, and 10 in those, go on those factors that, we write, that, that I wrote next to the number line. So number one, what is 0 minus 6? What's that? What, what was that again? Okay, ultimately, uh, we're not going to care about its value. What we're going to care is the sign and in this case the sign is negative okay what is zero minus two positive or negative negative, negative. all right let's look at the second column what's four minus six negative what's four minus two positive and well last for the last column what's ten minus two what's uh ten minus ten minus ten minus two positive <laughs> All right, so we have everything that we need to answer the question. So number one, we're gonna multiply the signs for every column. So number one, what's a negative times a negative? Positive. What's a negative times a positive? Negative. And again, what's positive times a positive? Positive. All right, so. Now that we have everything on our screen of signs or a chart of signs, we're going to go back to answer the question in this case. So in this case, we want to know for which intervals do we have this greater than zero. In other words, greater than zero means positive, isn't it? So we need to go with these intervals right here. But actually, because this inequality is only greater than, not greater than or equal, that's going to be just a parenthesis. And it's going to be this right here and this interval right there. All right. What would that mean in this case? Well, so actually, we're not going to consider the negative infinity and the positive infinity because, well, we don't know what this graph is going to go in, in the negative direction, actually. Well, if for negative values of t, actually, we should restrict the domain to actually uh, between 0 and 9 seconds, all right? So in this case, well, that's... Uh, zero and that's a uh, nine. All right, what does that mean in this case? So we can write down our conclusions here that um, the particle is moving to the right or forward 
Is that to the right or for yes? Moving forward. When on the interval zero to two between the first two seconds and uh, between six and nine seconds. All right, and it's moving backwards. So it's backwards in the interval in which we have negative values for the velocity. In this case, between two and six seconds. All right, if we wanted to draw a picture of this, um, essentially the, gra the particle is doing the following. So the particle is going to the right within the first two seconds, then going back backwards until six seconds, and then again going forwards after up until between six and nine seconds. It's essentially doing that. I didn't want to do this because, well, if I do this, then that, well, you wouldn't be able to see the difference between when it's going um, forwards and going backwards. So I think the S shape gives us a better so zero and two, and then two and what is this? Six, and then six, two, nine. It's going forward, right? Forward, backwards, forward. Yes. Where's the nine coming from? Uh, it's it's part of the restriction of the domain. I forgot to type that on the on the actual exercise. All right. Okay. So let let let's see about it. Number one. Okay. W Recall that derivative means slope, okay? So, if the sign of the slope is positive, what does that mean for a graph? Would you expect to see an increasing graph or a decreasing graph? What if the sign of the, of the, of the derivative is negative? Would you expect an increasing or decreasing graph? Okay, how about we check all these results using the graph to see if they are consistent well so between one and two seconds, unfortunately, I can't see the whole graph. Do you see how the graph is going up? It's increasing. And then after two seconds, it's decreasing. Then after six seconds, increases again. All right. So I think this puts all this uh, of this result that we that we that we got into a consistent with consistent with their definitions. Well. Letter D, so that's letter D, that's uh, letter E, draw a diagram to represent the motion of the particle, all right. So essentially what they're asking us is to draw the graph that I had on the graphing calculator. So I'm just going to do something very representative and well, so that looks like One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to have a couple of x intercepts. That's two and four and so it should look like this. All right. Well, in this case, that means the graph is increasing oh no that's supposed to be one never mind okay at one four mm -hmm. and two three four five six okay so here is where oh come on come out fine okay so if we divide this graph into three sections okay so here is the first section in which the graph is increasing that is the interval zero to two Right, it's increasing in the interval zero to two. 
and then the graph will decrease after reaching that maximum value. So let me use a different color. Okay, so it's going to start decreasing until we re it reaches a minimum. And in this case, this will be between, what is that again? Two and six. And then the graph will increase again. Well, in this case, I just want the bound up to nine. From two to nine. All right. Again, that's putting this into a picture. And well, so that was part E. Draw the diagram that represents the motion. Well, yes, it, it looks like it has an incre it's increasing because the derivative is positive. That means that the velocity is positive, which means that the particle is moving forward. Then the graph starts to decrease. That means the derivative is negative. And in this case, the derivative negative means that the particle is moving backward in the path. And once again, the particle is moving forward because we have a positive rate of change, a positive derivative. All right, so what's the next part? Find, uh, find the total displacement of the particle, uh, of the particle in this case, that is, the total displacement of the particle will be whatever distance traveled from zero to nine in other words if we if the particle were to go from a to b in this direction without going up and down you know or forward and backward rather well essentially they're asking us for the for the following they're asking us to find uh, for letter letter f total displacement recall that displacement is not the same as distance displacement is what's the distance between point A and B going on a straight line and distance is well how much do we for example if we want to find the if I want to know how far it is from here to the cafeteria well I cannot do that by displacement because well I have the walls of the room and then I, I will run into some of the trees and then other walls you know of the other of the other rooms in the right straight to the cafeteria however in this case what I will be able to find it's the distance from here to the cafeteria so this horizontal distance and then turn to the left to go to go down the hall and then turn another left to go across the uh, or to get out the, of the of the building and then turn another right to go to the back side of the of the love library and then turn another left and walk upstairs and finally get to the cafeteria so there's no way i can find it by uh, i mean if i wanted to do by walking of, of course i can do it with a map and just measure the distance between the two points so in this case essentially what's the distance in this case uh, that's essentially S of S of T2 minus S of T1 which is a delta S in this case it's an increment in this case well so T0 equals okay I mean T1 is equal to T0 and T2 equals to 9 essentially they're asking us to find S of 9 minus s of 0. So what do we need to know? We need to evaluate the given position function at 9 seconds and we need to find the position after uh, minus the position, the initial position after 0 seconds. Well, how are we going to do? Well, one way is to plug in those values in the original function however plugging all these values is going to take a good minute to plug in simplify so i'm just going to use the graphing calculator to get those values all right so s of 9 will be so we can always go to second calc value at zero 
and that's going to give us negative 20. So uh, that's minus negative 20 for 0 and s of 9. Second calc value at 9. That's 61. So 61 minus negative 20, that actually adds up to 81 meters. So that's the distance from the initial point to the final point as a straight line. That is the displacement. All right. Okay. For next part of the problem, next part of this problem, which is letter G. What's the total distance within the first nine, nine seconds? So in this case, uh, this is what I'm going to do again. I'm going. This direction to the room, then a, then a left, down the hall, another left, all those steps I showed you before to get to the cafeteria. So, in this case, for total distance, so for example, th here is the thing. The profile of the motion of the particle is to move forward, backward, and then forward again. So essentially, I'm doing this. Moving forward, moving backward, and then moving forward again. The fact that I'm moving backwards some some feet right here, that doesn't mean I can cancel those those feet I walk backwards from the ones that I moved forward before, right? Because actually this is still some positive distance, let's say. One, two, three, alright? If I go backwards. One, two, three, four. How many steps do I have so far? Seven. Seven. Then I'm going to go forward again. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So what's my total distance then? Is that at 12? So in this case, I started at a. Okay, I did three, then four, and then five, right? So one, two, three, and then. So three minus four. It's a negative one plus five. I would have said my total. Well, in this case, the total the total uh, displacement was actually four units, which is not my total distance, right? Because those steps backward actually counts towards the work I'm I'm doing to move backwards, forward, and once again, right? So in this case, well, uh, all right. We will have to consider the, the, the three stages where the particle moves forward, backward, and then, and then forward again in the same way I did it step by step here in front of the board. So the first stage, stage one, it's going to be the displacement for the first stage, which in this case is S of, uh, in this case, 2 minus S of 0. All right, the absolute value of that because Again, even though when, when I walk, okay, so I walk one, two, three steps, and then I walk backwards one, two, three, four, four steps. That doesn't mean that I'm walking a negative distance. It's just four steps in the negative direction, in the backwards direction. That doesn't, that, there's no such thing as a negative distances. So that's why we have to have this absolute value. All right? Uh, give me one second. So this second stage, which is going to be between S, S at 6 minus S at 2. And the last stage will be uh, S of 9 minus S of 6. So essentially, we're looking at individual displacements, but what we're doing is finding the absolute value to take those as positive steps. Again, just the same way of my example when I was more, when I was doing different number of steps forward and backward. There, there are still, the, regardless of the direction, there are still positive steps in this case. All right, what's S sub two? Did we find S sub two? Uh, I think we found S sub two. So, okay, let's set up the, the formula here. So, S, absolute value of S sub 2 minus S sub 0. And 
plus s of 6 minus s of 2 and s of 9 minus s of 6. Okay, so we're going to find those calculations, find those differences, find the absolute value of those. Uh, okay, s of 2. Um, how does that? Okay, s of 2 we already got from part uh, part b that it's a zero, isn't it? So this will be um, zero minus s of zero. I believe we found s of zero before. If not, okay, let me do s of zero second calc value at zero. Oh, we already did. It's negative twenty. So. Uh, minus negative 20. Be careful, we're subtracting a negative value where we, that becomes a sum. And then plus, one actually, three. Plus s of 6. Okay, so let me do s of 6. Value calc at 6. And that's also negative 20. Interesting. Uh, negative 20 minus s of 2 but we already got s of 2 isn't it which is negative 20 all right so zero. it's actually oh it's zero isn't it wait a minute s, six, s at 6 and at no it's, it's at 2 at 2 yeah 12 not at Okay, what is that? A negative or positive? All right. And last but not least, let's calculate uh, s of n s of nine. What's s of nine? I, I don't know if we did s of nine. I think we did, but let me do it again. Second calc value at nine, and that's oh 61. I don't remember seeing this one. 61 minus uh, isn't it negative 20? So let's simplify this to get the total displacement. How is S2 different? Which one? How is S2 different in both conditions? Uh, 0 is the first one and 12 is the This one? Yeah, that's 0. Yes, S of 2 and S of 2. Oh, over here, right? Because I have a different value. Okay, let me let me check the numbers again. S of 2, that's 0. S of 0 is negative 20. And then S of 6, which we got. Oh, okay, okay, okay. S of, okay, let me do S of 6 again. Calc value for 6. S of 6 is negative 20, which is, oh, this one, negative 20. And minus S of, S of 2 which is, let me do that again, calc value at 2, it's all, it's, it's 12, so this one is supposed to be uh, a 12 here, right, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I got it, 12, 12 and 12, right, mm -hmm. and well, so S of 961 minus S of 6, which is 20, and well, so that's a 32, or absolute value 32 plus absolute value of negative 32 plus absolute value of 61 plus 20, that's 81. And well, 32 plus 32, well, that becomes positive. 32 plus 32 plus 81, that's a 64 plus 81, that's 5 and 145 meters so between going forwards then backwards and then forwards again this particle traveled a total of 145 minutes right